Hey students, this is Mr. Ravenscroft, and I'd like to teach you how to create equations with no solution or infinitely many solutions, or in some cases, with uh, one solution. So if you're on IXL, this is topic W16 in the eighth grade set of topics, and the shortcut is ZTY. If you are trying to find that quickly, uh, that is a guaranteed way to find that. So before we jump into the problems, I think it'd be much smarter to empower you uh, to understand what's going on so you're not stressfully memorizing some steps that make no sense to you, and that knowledge is like sand in an hourglass that's going to fade away. Um, let's empower you to understand this with a much easier example to learn with. I want to give you this simple problem, so I'm going to just put example one here. Imagine I told you we had a mystery number, we'll call it x, and apparently when you add one to it, uh, you get some weight on this side. When you add one pound to it, you get some weight. And on the other side, we have the same mystery variable. There's some number that x equals. It's the same number as over here. But when you add one pound to it, um, you get the same weight as you would get over here. It makes these equal. And I said, hey, can you figure out what x is? What number would make this true? Some of you would probably sit there and stare for a little bit and then suddenly decide to, you know, try something. So you might try like the number two and you work it out in your head and you'd say, well, two plus one, does this make this statement true? Is it a solution? Does the solution just make something true? Does two plus one equal two plus one? It works. And you'd shout out, the answer is two. And we'd all be like, yeah, okay, let's test it. And we'd test it and you'd say it's right. And someone else would go, no, -uh, I tried three. And we would test it, right? And so someone else said, okay, what about three? How about three plus one? If we plug in a three for X, will that make a true statement? That's also true. You might be noticing something here. Because the two sides of the equation look identical, how many numbers do you think will work for x? How many different numbers will work for x that you could plug in? It actually would be any number you plug in for x. As long as you plug in the same thing on both sides for x, it's going to be a solution to this. So how many solutions are there? Because solve uh, means tell me the solution, or in this case, they're telling us to find the missing number so that the equation has you know, no solutions or infinite solutions. In this case, we would actually say when both sides look identical, no matter what I plug in, it's going to be a solution because it makes the statement true. It's going to make the two sides of the equal sign balanced. So this is what we call having an infinite, it's like finite with the word n in front of it, infinite number of solutions. So it's talking about how many numbers make that true. Infinite number of solutions. That's one option. Now your other option is when they're almost identical but just slightly different. So if I could just split this page here. Let me make it an example too. So imagine that we have an x plus 1 and it's equal to an x. And I said, hey, you tell me what can x equal? Question mark. And you threw out a number. Maybe you said, let's try 2 again. And so we plugged in a 2. Um, so we test it out, and we say, okay, does 2 plus 1 equal 2, question mark? And we'd say, no, that's going to be 3 is equal to 2. This is false. This is not true. These are not equal. We put a dash of the equal sign. Oh, okay, so 2 wasn't an answer. Uh, maybe try a different number. Maybe try, um, let's see, how about a 4? Okay, let's try a 4. Does 4 plus 1 equal 4? Man. That's five and four. This side was one pound heavier than this side again. Last time it was three and two, and now it's five and four. Why is this side always one bigger than the other side? Well, think about it. These two are almost the same thing. One's X, one has an X, but this side says, hey, whatever you plug in for X, add one more pound to that. So when will these two sides ever be equal to each other? If X is the same thing on both sides, if I add one pound to one side, won't this side always be one pound heavier? These almost would have been identical, but because they had one thing different, the x's were the same, so we knew it was something special going on here. Maybe there's an infinite number of solutions, or in this case, maybe there's no solution, right? When they're close to being the same, but not quite, because the numbers, the number cubes, if you've done hands-on equations, they're not the same, then in this case, we could say there's no solution. So those are the two options we're looking at uh, with this lesson here. Uh, where they're identical. In that case, there's an infinite number of solutions because no matter what I plug in, all the numbers work. And in this case, the x's are identical. There's the same number of x's, so they're balanced. Uh, but 
they don't have the same number on both sides being added to those x's or subtracted. So in that case, they're always going to be imbalanced. There's never going to be a number that makes this a solution. In that case, there's no solutions. That kind of wraps up the concept. And if you fight to understand that, that'll empower you not to have sand, but to have something that just sticks with you. It's an understanding. Um, it's kind of like riding a bike. You just don't forget it. It just feels comfortable and it's fun because it makes sense to you how to do it. Let's take a look at the examples and see how to apply what we've learned to these problems. So let's take a look. Okay, in this problem, it says find the missing number so that the equation has no solutions. Don't forget, no solutions are when the x's really are the same. So we gave an example like this. The x's were the same, and this is when you'd have an infinite number of solutions, but then the numbers are a little bit off. So no matter what I plug in for x, it's going to be true unless what I add to this isn't the same. So let's take a look. How are we going to get, first off, the x's to be the same? They have two x's over here. Wouldn't you need two x's on this side? Yeah, that, that'll work. So no matter what I plug in for x, this term and this term are now going to give me the exact same thing. I could plug in a, a 3 and 2 times 3 would be 6, 2 times 3 would be 6. These two equations are going to look identical. But the problem is, in this case it's what we want, this side's going to add 10 while this side's only going to add 5. So these two would have made an infinite number of solutions because no matter what I plugged in here for x, they were going to be equal. But the thing that made this have no solutions, which is what they wanted us to figure out, was that this side was adding a 5 while this side was adding a 10. So first make sure the x's are the same, and then if it's no solution, make sure they're actually a little bit off and they're not perfectly equal to each other. There'll be no number you can plug in that makes this true. So let's type in our answer 2 and look for another type of problem a little bit more difficult. Here we go. In this problem, uh, it says find the missing number so that they have an infinite number of solutions. So let's think about that. Infinitely many solutions means that no matter what I plug in, it's always working. So that means that they're exactly the same. So if they have negative 5x's, we should have negative 5x's. Let's plug in negative 5 and try another problem here. In this problem, the box is actually missing where the number usually goes, not, not the, uh, the constant, not the variable uh, term. So they already have the same number of x's, so we know this is a special situation where they're either going to be identical equations, and there'll be an infinite number of solutions, or they're not identical, and then it's no solution. So no matter what I plug in, these two terms are equal, but they say to find an equation that has infinitely many solutions. So that means we really want the second part to be identical. When we plug in a number, we need these two to say the same thing. So if they have a minus 19, over here they have a plus sign, so I'm tempted to go ahead and just make this a plus sign and say I'm going to add the opposite. So this is really like negative 4x plus negative 19. So that's what we need over here. We need a negative 19 so that these look identical and will actually give us an infinite number of solutions. Every number you plug in will make these two work. Let's find an even harder problem. Okay, hey students, at this point, maybe you're starting to know some codes, and if you haven't written any down, you might write them down to yourself now. Infinitely many solutions really just means everything I plug in is going to make it true, so I need them to look the same. Now, if our goal is to make these equations look the same, first we need to probably decipher what in the world this reduces to. So let's go ahead and deal with this parenthesis, which really means we're multiplying in the numbers right next to a parenthesis. We need to multiply negative 2, and negative times negative is going to be positive. Some people use this triangle to understand that. Negative times negative gives me a positive. Uh, negative 2 times negative 9 is going to be a positive 18. So this side ends up turning into 4x plus 18. So that means this side needs to look the same. So we're missing an 18 there. Okay, we'll type that in. And this is going to wrap up this topic for us. Let's go ahead and let you guys try it. If you have questions, I would love to help you out. Uh, just make sure to send me a, a message on YouTube or through my email, and we'll be glad to uh, make some follow-up videos or just answer your questions specifically. So thanks so much for tuning in, and I uh, hope you guys have a good rest of your day and that you knock down this topic. All right. Love you guys. Take it easy. Bye-bye.